Hi there, for today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up Ike version 2 site to site VPN between two Cisco routers on iOS XE. For this tutorial, I decided to stick to a very simple design. So instead of going with something pretty complex like this, I decided to just label everything and stick to very simple names because it's easier for people to grasp what I'm talking about. So for this particular one, we have site 1 and site 2. CSR2 represents site 2 and there's an internet router in the middle and we have a loopback interface uh, representing Google DNS just for the sake of um, simulating what's going on on the internet. Static route on this guy and this guy and pretty basic setup on the PCs, just a default gateway. No NAT has been set up yet. So we're going to start configuring site-to-site -site VPN. So we have connectivity between PC2 and PC1. Fill in the blank in your scenario. You have a server, you have multiple subnets. That's pretty easy, right? So in the end, once everything is set up, I'm going to introduce NAT. So most of the scenarios that involve site-to-site -site VPN, there is some sort of a NAT somewhere in the picture, right? So for instance, your PC needs to go out to the internet, reach Google, for instance, that imaginary Google IP. And uh, of course, it needs to also reach the other side. So I'm going to show you how to do NAT exemption, exclusion, NAT zero. There are so many names. So your users have both internet access and IPsec connectivity between the sites. So let's get started. So what I've decided to change in my video tutorials is that I try to follow the script that I prepared before, tested before. So in this way, I don't have to bang on the keyboard and then fix the problems with typos and possibly forgetting stuff. I think that's a good practice that whenever you want to do configuration, you should also follow the same thing. That saves you a great deal of time and of course, headache and all that stuff. So for the start, I'm going to log into this router. And before we continue, we have an IP address, we have default route and Obviously, you can get to Google, imaginary Google IP, no problems. Same situation with router 2, no NAT has been configured so far. Uh, IP routes, pretty basic stuff. I can get to the imaginary Google IP and everything looks okay, at least with basics. I'm going to go with the first step and that is creating the key rings. So here we are creating an Ike version 2 key ring. I'm going to name it my ring and I'm going to say peer is site 2, the IP address to the router and then the pre-shared key local. I'm using asymmetric key is site 1 and for the remote site, then site 2 exit out of that. So if you do do show run section key, your output should be something like this. So we have that checked out. I'm going to go to the next step and that is creating the proposal for Ike version 2. So I'm going to create my proposal which is called site 2 and then I'm going to go with encryption 256 AES CBC Integrity is going to be SHA-256. PRF is going to be SHA-256 as well. And group 24. I'm going to exit out of that. And in case you want to see the output, do show crypto like version 2, proposal site 2. It should give you the same output as you can see here. Next, we're going to create a policy. And in that policy, we're going to reference our proposal. So I'm going to say proposal site 2. And then next, we have to create an Ike version 2 profile. So I will just create a profile, Ike version 2, and I'm going to name it site 2 again. And in here, my local address has to be specified, local address of this router. So I'm going to paste it and the remote address, which is router 2. So we say match identity remote address IP address of that router. And then we say authentication is going to be pre-shared key and nothing else. You can see that there are other options, certificates. So we're going to stick with 
pre-shared key for this tutorial and the remote one is the same and here I'm gonna specify my key file or key ring so it's gonna be my ring which we created earlier here and again if you're curious to check your output you should run this command and you should be able to see for instance your local address your remote address the mask we didn't specify the mask but when you don't specify that it's gonna assume that it's just a single host and then local authentication remote authentication lifetime all sort of values that we specified some of them are default a keyring is the important one make sure you have that in there so next step would be for us to create a transform set and that is pretty simple so I'm going to create that, just pasting this command. In here, you can change the mode. Uh, by default, it's a tunnel mode. You can change it to transport mode. So I'm going to exit out of that. And again, if you're wondering what your output possibly should be, do show crypto IPsec transform. So I'm going to give you that output. You can see it's tunnel mode and you should be good in here. Next step would be for us to define the interesting traffic. So I will have to just create an ACL. So I'm gonna name it interesting traffic or IT. And then I'm gonna specify who's the originator and where's the destination. Like so. So our ACL is created. Now the crypto map, which basically glues everything together so I'm going to create one. This router doesn't have any crypto maps. So if you do not see anything, just create one from scratch. If there is existing one, then change the serial or change the number on your crypto map. So here I'm just going to create one. I'm going to specify the remote IP address and then Ike version 2 profile that we created. This one. I named it site 2 So I'm going to paste that in here and our transform set finally and then lastly but not the very last one match the access list that we just created and we should be good so now you have to tie this crypto map to an interface so i'm gonna go to my external interface to show ip interface proof this is where i'm connected to the isb my public interface i'm gonna go to that and I'm gonna say crypto map, the name of the crypto map. And you should be able to see something like that crypto Isaac camp on and uh, this particular line. So when you enable that on that interface, you should be able to see this message on your router. And again, show crypto map, it shows you where is it tied to, which interface. What is the transform set versus destination, lifetime. You can, of course, change the lifetime if you like to. Access list, the interesting traffic, and profile and the peer IP address. I'm not going to touch NAT for now because we want to configure site 2 and make sure that we have site 2 squared away. So I'm not going to be showing you really what I'm going to paste in here. This is going to be slightly opposite of what we did. For instance, the pre-shared key local for our keyring, which is asymmetric, is going to be site 2 instead for the local value. And the remote one is going to be site 1. Aside from that, the rest is pretty much the same. The proposal, it has to match the other side, except that there are a few situations where, for instance, your local IP has to change because, for instance, here, match local IP address is your local router you go to this side it changes slightly but pretty much the rest is the same with the of course exception that your access list on the other side needs to be opposite so for site 2 for instance you're gonna say permit 12168.2.0 to the destination 12168.1.0 that's your interesting traffic so I'm gonna just configure all of this and resume the recording all right, so I finished the configuration. Show crypto map basically shows you everything I did while I was in recording. You can see that this is the peer IP address, uh, Ike version 2 profile, opposite of what we configured with ACL. PFS is not set. Transform set is set to TS1. 
and tied to outside interface, which is this one. And of course, I don't have any maps. So I can map translations, it's empty. So now I'm gonna test with the client. So here we have 192.168.1.10. We're gonna try to reach 192.168.2.10. Okay, it's successful. It means that we've done everything correctly. So if I want to show you a few show commands, show crypto, the most important one, show crypto Ike version 2 SA, you can see that we have an SA established, show crypto IPsec SAs, and you can see we are encrypting, decrypting, everything looks good. These are the local and room subnets that, that we've specified on the ACO, so we look okay. And of course, if you're curious that what's happening on this side, I have also connectivity to site one, and things should be good. As long as you define the crypto maps correctly, you shouldn't be worried about this site is not able to initiate the VPN. So that shouldn't be a concern for you. Now I'm gonna go to the last piece that I talked to you about, and that is NAT. So in here, show IP interface brief, I have an IP address, which is representing Google, like I said. And as you saw in the beginning, I was able to reach that IP address from the routers, but not from the PCs. And the reason for that, we need to do some sort of a NAT. Now, I'm going to go to the notes of this video. So if you go with the standard ACO, I'm just going to allow 192.168.1.0/24 to be NATed, and I don't care about the rest, then your site-to-site -site VPN is going to be broken. So first, you need to do some sort of an exclusion for the remote site. So in this case, you have to define an ACO that says you will have to exclude this particular source to this particular destination. On the second line, you're going to allow everything else to be NATed. So I'm going to define that ACO first. IP access list extended NAT. Entry number 10, I'm going to deny this source for this destination and then I'm going to match everything else. Of course, I should go to my gig01 IP NAT outside and then gig02 IP NAT inside. I'm going to turn on NAT. If you don't know how to configure NAT, please go check this video, which I explained everything about NAT. Now I'm going to add the NAT statement, which says everything from inside that matches this ACO is going to be knotted and overload in the end for translating everything to just one IP. So I'm going to enter that. And right after I do that, then I should be able to access Google. Will I be able to access site two? Yes, there is no NAT misconfigured there. So I'm going to go to site two and do the same. IP access list extended NAT. I'll paste that line, second line, and we should be good. Going to add that statement also. On interface gig 1, IP NAT outside, internet gig 2, IP NAT inside. And we should be good. Can you get to the internet? Sure enough. Can I get to site 1? Sure enough, no problems. And of course, I can also tear apart the site side VPN connection, clear crypto like version 2 SA, just to make sure we don't have any leftover, clear crypto sessions as well. So I'm going to try and establish the site to site VPN again. You see, the first pack is going to be missed, second one, meaning that we establish the site to site VPN show crypto session detail. It shows that we have a session going on, show crypto Ike version 2 SA and show crypto IPsec SA. You can see that we are encrypting traffic, what encryption are we using, what is the hashing algorithm, the crypto map, and etc. etc. So that's pretty much it. I hope this video has been useful. If it was, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.